हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सुदेश कुमार उटके वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट वाचन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी शोलापुर सो टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट लूप कंट्रोल स्ट्रक्चर्स व्हेन इज द लूप कंट्रोल स्ट्रक्चर यूज बेसिकली व्हेन वी आर रिपीटिंग सम प्रोसेस अंटिल अ कंडीशन इज सेटिस्फाइड सो विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दिस लर्निंग आउटकम्स एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू डेवलप डिफरेंट प्रोग्राम्स यूजिंग वेरियस लूप कंट्रोल स्ट्रक्चर्स The following topics will be discussed in this particular video lecture. That is, first one is loop control structures. What is the loop control structure? What is the while loop? And what is the syntax for it? And what is the flowchart for? How will we write the flowchart for that particular while loop? Loop control structures. These are the statements which enables us to repeat some portion of the program either a specified number of times or until a particular condition is being satisfied. There are three methods by way of which we can repeat a part of program. They are using a for loop, a while loop, a do while loop. So we'll be discussing about the while loop in this particular video lecture. The while loop is basically used when you want to calculate the gross salaries of 10 different persons or you want to convert temperatures from centigrade to Fahrenheit for 15 different cities. Flowchart for the while loop. First, basically, it starts with a start phase or the start point, which is called from where the execution of the program starts. Actually, next is the initialization phase. That is, initialization phase. In this, will give the minimum value. That is, initial value for starting. If suppose I'm calculating the arithmetic progression from one to n numbers, okay, the initial value will be one, and the sum value will be for one to hundred. This should go on repeating for one plus two, zero plus one, one. So some value will be zero for this initialization step. Then is the test condition phase. In this test condition phase, we are checking the condition. That is, from one to hundred, we have given it. Whether one is less than hundred and two is less than hundred, this will go on repeating up to hundred is less than or hundred. So the when the when the condition is satisfied, that particular body of loop will be executed. And if it is false, suppose it is in the hundred and one. It's greater than hundred. It's not less than hundred. So it will go into the false phase, and whatever the output will be calculated will be displayed on the screen. So this is the body of loop, and next comes the increment operator. Increment is nothing but you are incrementing the value by one digit. And the false phase is stop phase. This is how the flowchart is written for the while loop. Initialize phase. We are giving the initial values called sum equal to zero, where sum is an identifier or a variable which is initialized to zero in order to calculate sum of the series. For example, one to ten, I want to calculate the sum of the series. Test condition. That is one to ten. It is checked. One is less than or equal to ten. Using the relational operators, we are checking whether it is satisfying the condition, or it may be the Modulus operators. Increment value. Value is incremented by the one. While loop. The general form of while loop can be written as initial is loop counter. That is i equal to one. That is the starting initialized value. And sum equal to zero. If it is sum of the series, then the while that is test loop counter using a condition. Test loop counter uh, counter using a condition. It may be using the relational operator. I is less than or equal to ten. Or i is less than or equal to 100, or it may be i less than 100. So a different condition. When the condition is satisfied, then it goes into the body of the loop. Do this, and and this statement is executed. What are the calculation? It will be executed after the condition is satisfied. Then the increment loop counter. So next, with this while loop, we'll have a, just a question like. Is the while loop an entry controlled or exit controlled loop control structure? When in this particular while loop, actually we are checking the condition at the entry, so it is an entry controlled loop control structure. Now, uh, let us take an example for calculating some of the odd numbers of the series. That is, one plus three plus five up to eleven. So basically, it starts with the that is in the C plus plus. It starts with the Header files. That is I O stream dot H header file, which H stands for the header file, and I O stream that is it men mentions input output stream, and hash include is the preprocessor directory. 
Then it includes hash include conio.h console input output header file. It includes two functions that is get ch and clrsr. IO stream it includes two defined objects that is cout and scene. Cout is with the insertion operator and scene is with the extraction operator. Then void main function void is the return type and main is the function from where the actually the program execution starts. Now integer n sum equal to 0 i equal to 1 integer n is nothing but I want to what is the n value it will be up to 11 digit and sum equal to 0 is the initialized value I want this initial value to be 1 so on that condition I have to sum equal to 0 and i equal to 1 is the starting value from where the you can't start with a 1 or 0 okay then afterwards c out enter the n okay c out there's a two oper there's an operator called double lesser than operator Okay, that is called insertion operator. What is it does is whatever the string is after that operator, it will take it and put it on the screen. Then there is a scene. Scene is a defined object for taking the input values. That is double greater than. It will take the input value, whatever the user enters from the keyboard and inserts into the particular identifier called n. Now while i less than or equal to n. So i value is one which is less than or equal to n is value is 11. So it will 1 less than or equal to 11. It's true condition. So then it will check for the odd number, whether it's a, it is a odd or even. If it is odd, then only it has to calculate the number of sum of the series. If 1 modulus of 2 is not equal to 0, it's true condition. So it will enter into the loop and it will calculate the sum equal to sum plus i, that is 0 plus 1 equal to 1. So Afterwards, it will increment the value to 2. So, 2 is less than or equal to 11. It's a true condition. Okay. When two, uh, 2 is less than or equal to 2 is a true condition, then it will come to the if, that is the if decision control structure. Okay. 2 modulus of 2 is not equal to 0. Is it true? No, it's a false. It's equal to 0. 2 is exactly divisible by 2. So, it is an even number. So, it will not enter into the lo loop. And the sum of the series will be the same, sum equal to 1. Okay. Now, once again, the i value will be incremented to 3. 3 is less than or equal to 11. It's a true condition. Exactly. Now, 3 modulus of 2 is not equal to 0. Yes, it's true. Okay. It's an odd number. So it will calculate this odd number for this. For what was the previous sum? Sum equal to 1. 1 plus whatever the 3 value. 1 plus 3 will be 4. And this will repeat. And then it will uh, display the sum of what are the numbers statement get ch to display the output on the screen input enter is n equal to 11 output will be 36 so this is the table sum equal to 0 and sum plus i okay so sum equal to 0 we have calculated 1 okay then for the sum uh, for the next value of i that is 2 okay 2 is a false condition because it is perfectly divisible it's an even number the sum will be constant for the 3 it's a true condition. 3 is not divisible by 2. It has a rem remainder 1. Okay. So it is an odd number. So then the sum value, what was the pre previous sum value? It was 1. So 1 plus 3 will be 4. 4 again. 4 will be a false condition. Okay. When it's a false condition, it will, uh, the sum will be as it, as it is in the odd sum. That is 4. Okay. For the odd number, it will calculate the previous sum value. That was 4 plus 5, 9. For 6, it's an even number. It's a false condition. Then it, the sum will be obviously 9. Then for 7, it's a true condition again. So what was the previous sum? It was 9. 9 plus 7 equal to 16. For 8, it's an even number again. It will be a false condition. So the sum value will be remain constant. For the 9, that is an odd number. It, would, it, it will calculate the previous sum value plus i value. That is 16 plus 9 equal to 25. Then afterwards, it will go to the next condition, that is 10. 10 is an even number. Okay, it's a false condition. So the sum value will be constant. Then for the 11, it's a true condition. So it will be 25 plus 11 equal to 36. So these are the references. Thank you.